my best sad face. <laughs> So, if I asked you to draw a map of Australia, you'd probably make something like this. Anyway, it turns out this isn't a super accurate map of our country. In fact, what you think most countries look like is probably a little bit off. So, how come our maps aren't accurate? Why haven't we fixed them? And what does Australia really look like? It doesn't have a smiley face. It's sad. <coughs> We all know this is what the Earth looks like. It's a globe. But to turn this sphere into a flat rectangular map, it's pretty tricky. So we need to make a few adjustments. And without the same artistic prowess, that's kind of what Gerardus Mercator did when he drew up the map you're probably most familiar with today. He was a Flemish cartographer, hoping to make a map that made navigation, particularly across the oceans, much simpler. Google uses the map today, and it's pretty common to find it in classrooms. Latitude and longitude run horizontally and vertically with nice, simple right angles, making it easier to draw a path across the sea. The angles and shapes of objects or countries are pretty accurate, but the size is a problem. Everything at the poles, the top and bottom of the map, it gets pretty inflated by this projection. This is one website that shows you how much the Mercator projection can distort size. So Australia is close to the equator. It's not particularly different. But if you move it to the actual equator, you see that it does shrink a little. And if we move it up to Canada, you can see that it grows and starts looking a bit different. Poor Tasmania never grows in size <laughs> when you drag it anywhere. If we move it up towards Greenland, it looks ridiculous. And this is why many cartographers think we have a Greenland problem. The problem is that Greenland looks giant on maps, all thanks to the Mercator projection, but it's actually tiny when you drag it down towards the equator. Whoop. <laughs> we can even take it all the way over to Australia, and it's like a bit bigger than WA, but not much. Thanks, Gerardus. So, how do we get the most accurate map of Australia? Well, we could use a different map, like the Gold Peters projection, which gives more accurate size but mucks with the shape. Or instead, why not use this new award-winning map from architect and artist Hajime Narukawa? His orthograph map won the Grand Award at Japan's 2016 Good Design Awards. And it uses some clever thinking and a bit of origami to segment, fold and unravel a map that shows size more accurately on a flat map. And check out how Australia looks now. With the size more in proportion, Australia looks a little elongated and WA appears a bit chunkier. However, if you're a stickler for accuracy, you might prefer to just get a globe instead. But even this might not be the most accurate map around because our continents are constantly moving. In fact, Australia sits on one of the fastest moving continental tectonic plates. We're creeping seven centimetres north every year. And by 2016, Australia was about one and a half metres off where MAP said it was because the last update to our position was back in 1994. Even a new update to whack us back into the correct coordinates won't be up. 100% accurate. It pushes Australia 20 centimetres too far, so it will be accurate by the time we hit 2020. OK, sure, maps aren't quite right. But why do we care? At the moment, our GPS devices are pretty accurate, but there are small errors, and part of the problem is that our maps could be better. So what's the solution? We destroy all two-dimensional maps. 